In his State of the Union address, Putin attempts to up the ante by threatening to implement arms control. Vladimir Putin, the President of Russia, burst the expectation bubble during his State of the Union address on Tuesday. He did not impose martial law or proclaim a fresh round of military mobilization, he repeated the same justifications for his invasion of Ukraine almost a year ago, and he provided no roadmap for how the conflict he started might be resolved. Putin did, however, provide at least one headline, declaring that Russia would be pulling out of the New START nuclear arms reduction pact. He claimed that the US and NATO publicly declare that their objective is the strategic defeat of Russia. Then what? Are we just to let them wander around our, nuclear, sites after that? Putin was making reference to complaints made by US officials that by refusing to let US inspectors into its nuclear facilities, Russia was infringing on New START, the last standing arms control deal governing the two largest nuclear arsenals in the world. They want to overtake our nuclear sites and hand us a strategic defeat, according to Putin. So I'd like to declare today that Russia is discontinuing its START treaty involvement. The head of the Kremlin hastened to clarify that Russia is only suspending its involvement in the treaty, not completely leaving it. However, he launched into a protracted rant about the alleged motives behind the West's assistance to Ukraine before making any comments on arms control. I don't know what else to describe it, but a theater of the absurd," said Putin. We are aware that NATO is involved in the Kyiv regime's efforts to attack our air bases. Additionally, NATO experts have outfitted and updated the drones used for this. And now they want to visit our sites and look them over? This sounds like complete nonsense in light of the present conflict. In some respects, the uneasy status quo is maintained by suspending the New START treaty. The COVID-19 pandemic has prevented the US and Russia from conducting the inspections that are required under the deal to ensure compliance with each other's weapon sites. Thus, Putin's address contained nothing novel. In his rambling, one hour and 45 minute speech, he repeated the same justifications for his full-scale assault on Ukraine and offered some warmed-over complaints about the West. In reality, his speech was eerily similar to the one that appeared on television on February 24, 2022, announcing the start of Russia's alleged special military operation in Ukraine. A. 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 He continued to emphasize that the West is to blame for the strife. They were the ones who started the conflict. Putin emphasized. And we used force to halt it and still do. Such comments, appear to be directed at a domestic audience whose sense of normalcy has been significantly disrupted. Putin thus portrayed the role of the reassuring wartime leader, observing a moment of silence for the fallen Ukrainian soldiers, and declaring that Russia would establish a special fund to support the social benefits of veterans and fallen Ukrainian soldiers' families. The Russian president also made some insinuations regarding the rank and file discontent that has returned to the Kremlin as a result of a partial mobilization last autumn. The mobilization has been plagued by demoralizing organizational challenges, supply issues, and general disarray, which has greatly outraged Russian society. Putin promised to make rotations in Ukraine more predictable and to give troops much-needed vacation time. Everyone is well aware that serving in the special military operations zone involves extreme physical and mental strain as well as constant dangers to one's health and life. Therefore, I consider it necessary to establish regular leave lasting at least 14 days and occurring at least once every six months, excluding travel time, for the mobilized, in general for all military personnel, for all participants of the special military operation, including volunteers, so that each soldier has the opportunity to visit families and be close to relatives and friends. Another way to read that sentence is as follows, soldiers should prepare for some are and are because the Russians need to prepare for a protracted conflict. For those Ukrainians who bothered to pay heed, the response to Putin's speech was overwhelmingly dismissive. The head of the Ukrainian presidential office's advisor, Mihailo Podolyak, asserted that Putin had abandoned the plot. He wrote on Twitter that Putin openly demonstrated his irrelevance and confusion. Because Nazis, Martians, 
and conspiracy theories are everywhere. In many respects, that mocking assessment is accurate. Putin's speech left Russians with the following major takeaways, you are surrounded by enemies, they started the war, and there is no relief in sight for the special military operation.